Suppose you have a room full of people. What is the probability that any two of them have the same birthday? It seems like for a small group of people, the number should be small. After all, if you have just two people in the room, the probability is 1 out of 365, or 0.27%. On the other hand, if you had a room full of 366 people, the probability is 100%, because with that many people, there aren't enough unique birthdays in the year to go around. But what happens in between 2 and 366? What's the probability of having two matching birthdays if you have, say, 20 people in the room? The answer is surprisingly high, leading to something called the birthday paradox. So this little code is the beginning of a larger code that we're going to develop to demonstrate the birthday paradox. Our goal here is to make a single check of a group of people to see whether they have the same birthday. Uh, the way we're going to do this is use our random integer generator. We made this in an earlier video in vPython for Beginners. I'll have a link to that video in the description below. Basically, this selects a random integer between a lower bound x1 and an upper bound x2 um, inclusive. So it can go, uh, it can include the beginning point and the ending point in the list of possibilities that it selects. Um, we're going to set the days per year here as 365. Sorry to anybody born on leap day. This just makes the calculation simpler. You could play with this number if you wanted to, uh, if you wanted to try out years of different length to see how that changes the probabilities here. And we're going to start out with 20 people in the room. So what we want to do first is assign a birthday to each of these 20 people. Now we don't need to actually encode the date, so we're not going to actually print out um, July 28th or whatever, um, we're just going to assign a number 1 to 365 because we're not interested in the date itself, we're interested in the probability of a match. And so here we start a list of birth dates. So this is going to contain 20 numbers randomly selected 1 to 365. And so here we just loop over the people, so uh, we're just looping over the number of people and then appending to the birth dates list a random number selected between 1 and 365. So we've given everybody their birth date. Now we have to check for matches. Now we're not interested in counting the number of matches. That is a different mathematical problem. We just want to ask the question, are there any matches at all? And so for that, we're using a single logical variable called any matches. And this is an answer to the question, are there any matches in the set? And of course, we're going to start out as false because we haven't found any matches yet because we haven't looked for any matches yet. So here we go and we need to check for the matches. In order to check uh, for matches, we have to compare every value with every other value. So we're going to loop over the people in the room twice. Now we have to make our loops a little bit different. Here we're looping over all the people. So i is going to run from 0 to n people. Uh, but j is going to run from i plus 1 to n people. The reason we don't want to run this from 0 to n people is because then eventually we'll get a case where i equals j and i's birthday is going to equal j's birthday and so we're going to get a false match there. That's actually a mistake I made when I was first writing this. So we start with i plus 1 so that we never get i equal to j and we're able to check all the possible matches. And basically all we do is use a logical statement here. If birth dates of i equals birth dates of j then we set any matches equal to true. So if this becomes true at any point in the loop, any matches is going to be set equal to true. The only way any matches can remain false is if we have absolutely no matches. You notice we never switch this back off to false. We can only switch it up to true. And then at the end of that loop, we simply print out the result. If we have any matches, then the computer tells us we have a match. And if we don't have any matches, then the computer says no match. So you can run this with Control-2. Uh, like with all my codes, this code's available in a link in the description below. So here we generated a set that had no match, so that's unfortunate. But that's probably what we would expect, right? 20 seems like a small uh, sample of people to be working with. But lo and behold, we went through three iterations and we found our first match. Now that's not a very scientific conclusion because it's not a large sample size of sample sizes. But if we continue this, what you're gonna find is that we do end up with a surprising number of matches. See, there's another one. There's another one. 
and there's another one. So you can already kind of get an idea anecdotally that this probability might be higher than you intuitively think that it is. And so our next step is going to be to expand this code to loop over uh, multiple trials so that we don't have to keep running it over and over again. So here's an expanded version of our previous code. Uh, we still have the same random number generator. We still have the same list of birth dates. We're still assigning people a random birth date between one and 365 inclusive. And we're still making the comparison and then determining whether we have any matches. The difference now is that we're going to be repeating this part over and over again. So we have a new loop set up. So we have nested our previous code here into a loop where we're looping over this number n. Now n keeps track of the trial that we're on. So we're going to start out by doing 100 trials. We're going to keep the same number of people as before, 20, but we're going to repeat this experiment 100 times. We're going to have the computer do the repeating for us, unlike in the previous code where we had to rerun it every time we wanted a new trial. And the way we're going to summarize the results at the end is by keeping track of the number of matches. So here we're keeping track of the number of trials in which we found at least one match. So we start out within matches equal to zero. And if we find any matches, then we still print our we have a match output because it's nice to kind of see that the program is running. But we're also going to increase in matches by one. And then at the end of that loop, so at the end of the trials loop, this, this outermost loop here, we're going to print the percent results. So we're going to present the number of matches divided by the number of trials, multiply that by 100 to get a percentage. So that's the fraction of the trials with a match. So experimentally, this is sort of the probability of getting a match. If you were to do this many, 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 many times, it'll approach that actual probability from the mathematical formula. So let's try out with 100 trials this time, control two to run. And we get out a huge list of match, no match, match, no match. You can kind of see how it alternates back and forth there like we had before. And we ended up with 44% of our trials got matches. And that's surprisingly high, right? This is only 20 people with 365 days out of the year. So here already we've got a numerical evidence for the birthday paradox, that this percentage is a lot higher than you might intuitively think it is. Now, of course, that could be a fluke, right? We're dealing with random numbers. Let's try another 100 trials. We got a 43%. And if you keep repeating this, you find that it matches pretty well. That was a little bit lower at 38%. Let's run even more trials. Let's make this 1,000 trials and run it with Control-2. And now, of course, it's going to take longer. It's going to take 10 times as long because it's doing 10 times the work. And we still get about the same number, 41%. So it looks like it's around 40-something percent. It looks like it's around the low 40s. Uh, we could also change the number of people. So let's suppose that we went from 20 to 30 people. Seems like we should get a higher number because you have more people. you got more opportunity for overlap. And lo and behold, you get 72%. You get an even higher number. And again, 30 doesn't seem like that much, right? That's only, that's not even a tenth of the number of days in the year. And we get an eight, a 70% a uh, chance of a match. So it's at this point you start to think that maybe there's something weird going on here. Maybe there's something counterintuitive going on in the math. And so it would be nice to know how this number grows with the number of people. And so in the next version of this code, we're going to take this loop, so we've already got a loop for the number of trials, we're going to make one more loop around that to loop over the number of people. All right, so here we have our full-fledged birthday paradox code. Again, all these codes are available in the description below. All you need is a Glow Script account. You can uh, edit them and play around with them. Um, we have our same random integer generator. Now we're adding in a graph so that we can have the percent trials with a match, the probability of getting a match, versus the number of people in the set. In order to create that graph, we've got to loop over the number of people. So we're going to be looping from two people, where our probability should be next to zero, that's one out of 365, to let's go with a maximum of 70. Let's see how high we have to go before we approach 
uh, 100%. We still got 365 days a year. We're going to do, let's say 500 trials. So this is where we, we, we have to uh, keep in mind the type of experiment we're conducting. So this is 500 trials per size of people group. So this is 500 times for every value of the number of people in the room. So we're now, in addition to looping over the, uh, the, the number of trials, we're also looping over the number of people. So we've got loops within loops within loops going on here. And that's why I've structured the video so that we build the code out so that you understand what's going on. So here we've got um, our number of people. We're going from two to 70. Uh, we're going to have this uh, uh, animate a little bit for us. So this just sets the animation rate for the graph to grow. And so we have to keep track of the number of matches. We're going to set the number of, of uh, trials with a match equal to zero here, just like we had before. And then this interior loop here, this is exactly what we had before. Only this time we're not going to print out we have a match, we don't have a match. Um, just we get the idea for that now. We're more interested in the graph at this point. Um, so this chunk of code highlighted here works the same way as it did before. We're just looping over it again and again for a different number of people in the room. And then here we're adding to the graph the number of people on the horizontal axis and the fraction of matches or the percent matches on the vertical axis. So let's hit control two and see how this goes. So here we've got our graph. So each one of these data points represents an average of 500 trials. So here we've got our number of people. So we see we saw last time that for 20, we should expect about a 40% match rate. And that's exactly what we have here, right? About 40%. Uh, we saw that for 30, we get a, we get a, about a 70% match. So that's what we get here. And lo and behold, by the time you get to 50, you're pretty much at 100%. You're at the 98%. So this is the birthday paradox that you don't need a whole lot of people in order to, to have two people with the same birth date. You only need about 50 people to be at a 100% chance of having the same birthday. And you only need, let's see, what do you need in order to have a 50% chance? To have a 50% chance, you need just over 20 people. You need like 23, maybe 25 people to be safe. So if, if you're at a party and there's more than 25 people there, you can make a pretty safe bet that two people in the room have the same birth date, which is pretty neat. So feel free to take this code from the link in the description below. Play around with the parameters, uh, maybe even increase the number further or increase the number of trials, maybe change the number of dates in the year. See what you get. If you find anything interesting, uh, do let me know in the comments below or on Twitter at Let's Code Physics. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.